Rumblefish, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, released in 1983 and stars Matt Dillon as Rusty James, a quixotic teenage hoodlum who has his youthful illusions torn down and shown to be exactly that, illusions. He is supported by Mickey Rourke who plays his impenetrable and charismatic older brother known only as the somewhat mythical sounding The Motorcycle Boy, who is once the leader of their gang and serves as the focal point for Rusty James' greatest delusions. I love Rumblefish. It's a film full of useful exuberance focused by the artisan lens of Francis Ford Coppola. I love the energy that flips back and forth between the dream world and the grungy street setting of the story. I love the melodramatic teenage dialogue with echoes of Greek tragedy throughout in the grimy, sweaty streets of the American Southwest. I love the energetic, magnetic performances of Mickey Rourke, Matt Dillon, Nicolas Cage, Tom Waits as a mindful barman, Diane Lane, Lawrence Fishburne, Dennis Hopper, etc, etc, etc. I could go on, but you get the picture. The performances are fantastic. There's a scene about a third of the way through the film in which Tom Waits has a short monologue on how time is perceived by youths compared to how you think about it the older you get. Now as a fan of Tom Waits, I tend to hang off every word that he says anyway, but this soliloquy really gets to the heart of Rumblefish, I think. Time is a very peculiar item. You see, when you're young, you're a kid, you got time, you got nothing but time. Throw away a couple of years here, a couple of years there. It doesn't matter, you know. The older you get, you say, Jesus, how much I got? I got 35 summers left. Think about it. 35 summers. Rumblefish mostly takes place in black and white, which transports the viewer into the dream world of heightened reality that Rusty James inhabits. Shadows lengthen at increased speeds and clouds fly by in sped up footage, as if time itself is rushing these characters to their doom. There's a sense of unreality throughout the film, which makes Rumblefish completely unique. It's at once a youth film and an art film. I haven't mentioned the plot so much yet, because the film doesn't necessarily have a very strong plot. Essentially, Rusty James gets in gang fights, the motorcycle boy, his older brother, comes back, and then... <laughs> They go out and they drink. Rusty James has struggles with the ladies, one lady in particular, and the motorcycle boy slowly brings down the illusions that uh, Rusty James had about gangs and the motorcycle boy himself. The plot isn't really important to the movie. What is important is everything I'm about to talk about. I really like the music throughout. It's fairly idiosyncratic with its deep drums and pointed piano notes and has a deep rhythm all coming together to create a kind of primal and yet hypnotic, dreamlike soundscape. It should be mentioned that the sound design and visual design of the movie reflects the way the motorcycle boy sees the world with his colour blindness and selective deafness, which incidentally appears to be psychosomatic in my opinion, this is just me theorising a bit, as Rusty James's nerdy friend Stevie points out normal colour blindness would mean that the motorcycle boy wouldn't be able to see just certain colours, rather than everything being in black and white. The sound also has moments that reflect the motorcycle boy's hearing disability as well, his selective deafness. The brothers were both abandoned by their mother when they were very young, and it's heavily implied that they, the mother is insane, and there may be a genetic component to this insanity, which the motorcycle boy seems to have inherited. But the film doesn't just reflect how the motorcycle boy sees the world, it also, in the dreamlike illusions, it all reflects Rusty James's view on the world, with the heightened reality of gang fights in particular. There's a great gang fight scene at the start of the movie, which has billowing smoke everywhere, and the lighting is just flashing back and forth, and the drums are going crazy, and it reminds me of West Side Story more than anything else. It's that cinematic and over the top. Rusty James's view of the world is also kind of shown through his brother doing these amazing things that obviously no one could ever do. Now in the, in the film, obviously the motorcycle boy does do these things, but it all serves to further show Rusty James's delusions about his older brother. Now I'm going to talk about the things I don't like so much. 
I love the cinematography, I love the tone, I love the atmosphere, I love the characters, I love the acting, I love the music. Yeah, I love everything about it. Except for these few things that I think I'm going to rant about for a little bit. Because they do bring the film down. So, what can become irritating is the repetitiveness of some of the dialogue and names, especially if the name Rusty James isn't hammered into the inside of your skull by the end of your first watch, you've been very lucky. And there are moments, especially with Stevie, in which he states the obvious to the point of absurdity. And it doesn't help that Vince Spanos, who plays Stevie, nerdish caricature performance might well be the worst in the film. Actually, in my first watch of Rumblefish, I didn't understand why the character was even there, apart from to whine and to state the obvious for the viewers. Only now have I really come around on the character to think, oh, you know what, he does perform some tasks that other characters could not perform. One of those would be, is someone for Rusty James to open up to. Someone he can hang out with and that he can open up to. Which is important to get inside the mind of Rusty James to see how idealistic he really is. I've come to see Stevie as a reflection of Rusty James's immaturity and as an embodiment of Rusty James's idealistic loyalty to his friends and family, no matter how useless or unsuited to his lifestyle they might be. Certainly Stevie is something of a catalyst to change the messianic image Rusty James has of the motorcycle boy to something resembling reality. Stevie provides a realistic look of the world while still being just as immature as Rusty James. It's a shame then that I came to this conclusion on my third time watching the film as the performance of Spano irritated me so much that I thought he should just be cut from the script entirely. I don't like to pick on any in particular actor, but Spano in a film full of such great nuanced performances sticks out badly and actually made the film worse in my eyes, especially on a first watch. He's just a really irritating character. In stark contrast, Mickey Rourke brings a powerhouse of a performance, finding the balance between insanity and greatness seemingly with great ease, and delivers his dialogue with a subtle whispering that leaves one glued to the screen whenever he's on it. He's effortlessly cool and tragically separated from the rest of society due to his unique perspective, which is another way for saying he's crazy. Society cannot allow this man to exist. Society is kind of represented by the policeman who is always wearing sunglasses, even at night, now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> it's the policeman with the tucked in shirt and the belt and the, he has a gun on his hip and he's got the hat and the mustache and these big sunglasses. He is the quintessential representation of society, the man, the thing that's keeping order. Society cannot allow this man to exist because he thinks differently than them. This ties into one of the biggest themes of the movie, which is that society is stopping the people living in this small town from ever becoming anything, or becoming whatever they could be. There's a great sense that all of this is predestined. Like, there's no way that Rusty James can save himself or his brother or the amount of bad things that happens to him throughout the movie. The environment has shaped them and shaped how they think and they can't ever escape it. That it would take something amazing for them to escape that tragedy. This is also where it mirrors Greek tragedy in the fact that there's nothing that they can do to escape the tragic. It's extremely uh, reminiscent and the inescapability of the Wheel of Fortune in Greek tragedies. But whereas it's the gods in Greek tragedies, it's society in Rumblefish. There's a great line in the middle of the film where Motorcycle Boy is described as being like a prince in exile by one of the characters at a bar they go to. And I think that sums up the Motorcycle Boy. He'll always be in exile. He'll never find his true calling because despite being as amazing at everything that he is, that perspective that allows him to do that also means that society cannot accept him. Therefore, he is tragically fated to exile. And there's a sense that all of the characters are doomed to this society. To sum up, Rumblefish is a youth art film in the truest sense of both genres. And that's the thing that makes it so stunningly unique. So I'm gonna I'm feeling a 7.5 on this. So if you'd love to watch a youth film that is also an art film, check it out. Thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful day.